Something about escalating quickly. Hi, I'm Mike. This is Nick. We look alike, so yeah, we have nice. a show. We do. It's called Ask Twinsies. You ask us questions, we give whatever. We give answers. Don't blame us. Um, today is Father's Day. I um, do... do... <laughs> I was about to say something totally racist to go, do you guys have fathers? <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault. It was on a daily show thing that I saw earlier where they were talking about racial bias. And, and this guy was like, do you guys have fathers? Anyway, uh, do you do anything for Father's Day now that I've just stepped right into that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we did it actually on Friday night, though, because my little brother is in town. So we got everybody together on Friday night and celebrated an early Father's Day. Uh, and then my dad went golfing uh, with my stepmom today. What did you do? We tried to do it last night. We went to uh, Cane's, the chicken place, and we got a bunch of Cane's. And then there was no, you can't go inside. So we went to a parking lot and we're sitting in a park. It's 2020. And so here's a family doing family time, leaning over the edges of a car, trying to eat chicken. Um, and I told the kids, like, the purpose of today, of the next 24 hours, is to discuss how awesome I am. And I kid you not, we're driving back afterwards. And I was like, you guys spent the entire time fighting with each other, and me being awesome didn't even come up. Like, Interesting. It was the most Father's Day Father's Day. Yeah. And did they do anything special for you today? No, I did. Uh, while we were sitting in that parking lot, there was a Jimmy John's right next to it, and they were about to throw away the bread, so they just sneak up to my car. It gave me a bit of a heart attack. My pants are at the, at the launders. Um, and mm. uh, they were like, you want some bread? Because they were about to throw away their bread. I was like, we need meatballs. So I went home today and made some meat. I did. You can see by the shirt. I was like, here's the thing. When you become a dad, all of the gender preconceptions just go out the window. I did gardening. I cooked meatballs. I wore this shirt. I tended to the beard. I like metrosexualed through my whole day. Fantastic. Morris Lilienthal and Mark Palmer are with us. They're celebrating their Father's Days. Happy Father's Day to you, gentlemen. Please get your questions in. Mo, I know you said you were going to have a question. I didn't see one come in before the show. You guys need to get a life. Anyway, this is what we do. Uh, we're going to drop questions. We okay. give terrible answers. That's the premise. If you guys want to continue to add questions in the comments, you can do that. And as long as we're here, we will answer them. This week, we'll get started with a little sci-fi. Elmer asks, which Ooh. Jules Verne craft would you prefer to ride in, the Nautilus, hot air balloon, or time machine? I'm always going time machine. Anytime this is a question, Mike, I want to travel forward in time, back in time, whichever. It's always the time machine. Yeah, definitely not doing a hot air balloon. And I feel like the Nautilus, no. there's just something that makes me really nervous about water compressing in i saw u571 i saw early matthew mcconaughey i know what happens i'm also going time machine yeah uh we've got a couple of questions uh happy father's day mike uh, mark palmer tells us and to i guess to you nick i mean yeah no i uh, i, I should uh, you have I a could tender be, profile yeah. you don't know yeah, i don't know uh I don't know mo lilenthal asks over or under i'm toilet paper Yes, he is toilet paper, um, but oh, it's he always means the direction yeah. It's of a, the correct. It's a it's a heated debate. Oftentimes, uh, it, it's only over. There's only one it's answer. How it was intended. That makes literally yeah, no sense. It, if you I put it under, why. you pull it out, and then it's is it too far? And I don't know. Do you wind it back up? No, that doesn't make any sense. You do it over. You get exactly yeah. the amount you want, and then you you walk out and you uh, you know. You've done your business. The patent, the actual design patent for it shows it over, as I recall. Huh. That's called data. So, yep. Mo points out that was a typo. Uh, yeah. He is he, not, in fact, toilet paper. He's not toilet paper, which is great. I'm glad that he's not. He is not. Uh, Sean asks the question, how much screen time do I need before I get superpowers? What say you? Yeah, uh, more. He needs more screen time. I don't think he's getting enough in. If he doesn't have the superpowers yet that you and I uh, possess, um, he's just going to add more. I'm going through right now to look at my notifications to see, because, you know, it's Sunday, so I got that thing uh, about how much time. I hate these things 
that tell you how much time you spent on your, oh my uh seven hours and seven minutes a day that's how much that's Ooh, how much you have to be on your phone you got to crank that up those are weak powers. numbers those are rookie that's numbers easy uh, yeah. Mark Palmer, as correct as the single space after a period. That's right. Who does yep. double space? People who do under and double spaces, uh, there's an island for you somewhere, uh, and we'd yeah. love to send you to it. Yeah, uh, terrible people. Carol comes in with sex again. Sexy. Naturally. Sorry. Which well, is the uh, most sexy Why term? wouldn't you ask It's us obvious. We sex understand appeal. sexiness. Yeah. What is the most sexy term in the techie ecosystem and why? I'm going to go with scale, Mike. Scale. Mm. Involves size. Involves size. Yeah, I was going to say AI, but I think it's Fasimil. Ooh, Fasimil is good. That is a good one. She um, also asks... If you haven't you been here before yeah, tonight, that's called an inside you joke, may not okay? know that. Tune in yeah. every week. Uh, Carol does ask as well, do you feel happy being bald? I assume she's talking to you. Yeah, so you notice that uh, I haven't trimmed it for a couple of Growing weeks Growing it here, out. Mike. We're getting ready for the comb over. Just spinning it around. Yep. Yeah. That's I nice. Because I wanted to prove to Carol and others that I look glorious regardless. Yeah, speaking of, this is a bit of a fixation this week. Uh, Colin follows up with... When did you last have a full head of hair? Somewhere around 25, 26 for me, Mike. How about you? Oh, what does full head of hair mean? Like, when did I start losing hair? Yeah. 20? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know. 20? I remember I was, uh, I was on my mission, and some guy who he was from... Um, Somewhere Italy. Eastern Europe. And oh. he had really dark hair and he was balding and he was like got really mad because he was like, Everybody sees that I'm balding because I have dark hair and you don't have dark hair, so people don't know you're balding. I was like, they know. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. The other thing is it w there is definitely a pattern of uh, uh, a pattern of baldness in the questions tonight. Uh male pattern baldness. But honestly, Mike, if we had hair if we had hair, I mean, nobody could compete with the sexiness at that level. Like, we had to do this just for others to be able just to Just to give Mark Palmer a shot. Just to give him a shot. Because otherwise, Mark, yeah. Palmer, Mark Palmer was doomed. Uh, Phil did ask the question, uh, speaking of hair, it's obvious that neither of you use beard grooming products, but can you recommend any? Yeah, I don't feel like this is that obvious. I feel like uh, it was a subtle backhanded insult by uh, by Phil. Uh, I can't recommend any because I don't use it. You know, my favorite implement is the spork. It's nice because you can get really fluffy, you know, beard hair. Right. But also, if anything dribbled down during dinner or whatever and you didn't know, you just get the spork yes. in there. It'll scoop it and you just... It's like a retrieval method. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like it. That's why they call it a soup catcher, Phil. Uh, Shelly asked the question, any advice on changing out toilets? Yeah, call somebody. Nick? Mm, no, no, no. This is, this is fun for me, Mike, because every once in a while I like to head over to the Home Depot and, uh, and just get lost in a museum of things that I don't understand, mm. which is what a Home Depot is to me. Mm. Uh, changing out the That's toilets. That's why I, I go found to the lingerie they... store. Oh, good for you. Uh, I've, I've found that the I top out right around changing the toilet seat, changing the whole toilet, I'm going for a professional. It's funny because I've actually changed out a toilet before, but I try to avoid these things. So these days when I go to Lowe's, it's for dirt and gardening implements because I've got peppers and Japanese eggplants that are going to happen. They will survive, damn it. Uh, Rebecca comes in and asks, do you ever mute WhatsApp groups? I feel like it's a must do. What does that mean? Oh, hold on. Before you answer that, we have to give, yeah. Mark, we have to give Mark Palmer his due. Enough shitty advice. Yep. Mark Palmer lands the dad joke. 
He does land the dad joke on Father's Day. This is why we had to give him a shot with the ladies by peeling our hair off. Anyway, Rebecca, WhatsApp groups, do you mute these things? Are you in WhatsApp groups? Is that a common thing in the States? I No, I, I it's not very common in the States. I do have some folks abroad that I do communicate with uh, in WhatsApp, but those are usually individuals. I'm not in a lot of groups. But I feel like this can apply to Slack groups and Facebook groups equally as it does to WhatsApp. Are you saying you mute the Lawyer Forward Facebook group? Oh, I muted it until, you know, like 6.45 on a Sunday, and then I reactivate it for 45 minutes. I did figure out on the, my iPhone how to mute my family. Hmm. That was very That's useful. nice. They were doing this thing. Yeah. Anytime they're trying to coordinate like a Mother's Day thing or a Father's Day thing or a birthday or an anniversary thing for my parents, all of a sudden there will be just this explosion of messages back and forth to each other. We don't talk for months at a time, and all of a sudden they got to make jokes to each other. So eventually I figured out, oh, I can just turn all this off. So very useful. Good call. Rebecca. Have you ever been – have you ever, uh, after turning that uh, group chat off, do you have you missed anything important? Oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah, stuff I was supposed to okay. buy or show up for. Yeah, all the time. Still right. Excellent. totally worth it. Bernard asks, why does Nick own a Home Depot orange apron, but his name tag says Mike? Is that real? It's not real, but it should be real. We'll come back to us next week on that one, Bernard. We'll uh, see what we can do about a Home Depot orange apron with a name tag Mike. Sort of feel you walking around with that on otherwise naked and uh, saying, I'm a fancy boy. I'm a fancy, fancy boy. Uh, Jason asks the question, why? Answer that, Nick. Mostly for wealth and adoration. Yeah, money and the girls. And fame. Yep. Yep. The, that's why. That is why I do it. That's why. It's How do you, it's did you have anything different, Mike? Or it's was probably that mostly... the, I'm just thinking it's probably in the Bible somewhere that it says money and girls. Yeah. Somewhere. That's Speaking of books it, that I don't actually read, see what I did with mm. the Bible thing there? Mm. Anyway, yeah, uh, which, nice song would you, which song would you play to keep as a thoth from waking? Yeah, that's uh, it's an easy one. Thanks, Elmer, for that question. That's going to be Inner Sandman by Metallica. And Azathoth is the god of chaos, a ruler of chaos from H.P. Lovecraft. For those who are unfamiliar, as I was before Wikipedia. Yeah, I got to say, I'm going back to Baby Shark. Do, 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 uh -huh. do, do. Let's not bring that back. Baby Shark. Because wouldn't the god of chaos be like... Baby shark makes me feel calm and sleepy, right? Potentially. You gotta, you gotta use... But I'm really, if we we're going to have chaos, let's do it. So bring in the Metallica. I'm just, you got to use logic when you're dealing with the netherworld. Uh, Johnny asks Ram, Rambo or Rocky? Rambo Always Rocky. Or Rocky. Always Rocky. Really? Pro preferably Rocky against a Russian. Uh, you know what I did one time that was a really weird idea? I was what? in college doing Middle East studies, and I went back and watched the Rambo, whichever Rambo it was, that he was in Afghanistan. And he That's was a good one. Fighting the helicopter, that one helicopter that was coming yeah. around. And all of the Mujahideen buddies are like, hey, way to go, Rambo, way to go. And I was just like, they blow down the, you know, they blow up the towers in a couple of years. So that's weird. It was just like really surreal that this sort of propaganda piece, which was Rambo, ends up being as yeah, yeah. significant as it but is. But it could be, uh, it could have been uh, that Rambo was buddied up with the Northern Alliance. So you may be mixing up your people in uh, that. So Good call. We abandoned them much later. Kristen Tyler jumped in and said, Happy Father's Day. I can ship you sharks if you need them. Don't ship him any sharks, please, Kristen. All right, next question. Okay, next question. <laughs> ah, Kristen. Uh, Brian, offended last week at our reference to haggis, asked, have either of you ever actually eaten haggis? I don't know. Have we caused offense? I, I can't imagine we've ever caused offense. We're pretty uh, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I've never, I don't know if I've ever had haggis. I honestly couldn't tell you. I probably, I feel like I've had it, but uh, I've had some very strange sausages in in uh, Europe. Uh, it could have been haggis. There was like a blood sausage. Okay, don't but... sexualize this. I know what you're trying to do. I see it on your face. <laughs> Nick had you some know. very strange sausages when he was in Europe. Okay? You yeah. can't, you just tee it up and I just, um, you know, everything, do what I can. Everything I know about haggis, I learned from So I Married an Ex Murderer. So I can't say that I'm much help. If you can wrap haggis in bacon, I would consider it. That's my that's my ship us some, Brian. Ship us some. Samina Brian. asked, Holy Have good. either of you ever eaten gefilte fish? Gefilte fish. I have not. Gefilte fish. I have not. Gefilte fish. Did you ever watch the outtakes I'm, from Rush Hour? I did. Gefilte I know exactly what you're referring to. Gefilte fish. Gefilte fish. Gefilte fish. It didn't feel like it was that hard of a word to say. I'm not sure why Chris Tucker had the tr uh, had trouble with that. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, Samina points out that I resisted it. That's what she said to the strange sausages. In if yeah. it, if you had had haggis, you would know haggis is like this thick around, and like even okay. in Europe, uh, you would notice a sausage that thick. Good lord! I mean, in the placement of your hands there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the next question joseph asks yeti or hydro flask so i i'm gonna say whatever mike drinks out of because oh. I, I i do not go for the um insulated coffee cups or any of that i i, I turn down the merch at conferences and I do, I'm not a big fan of uh, hot drinks at all. So this is a haggis size water cup. It is. It is. Um, I'm gonna say Yeti just because a friend of mine works there, and I literally have no other reason. But in either scenario, I'm not paying two hundred dollars for a cup. I don't understand. No, that. no. Um, so I had posted a question out to the interwebs. When someone figures out how to tell a 16-year-old that you want them to improve on something without them blowing up and storming off saying, fine, you do it, could you let me know? And for reasons unknown, Warren responds with, I know who can answer this, and then tags us. Mm, if I could I have answered it, Warren. I see what he's doing there. I see what he's doing there. So what if you uh, use words other than improved? I'd like you to improve on this. How, how have you how what other options have you tried i've tried seriously i've tried that okay i've tried so, um i'm ashamed of you i've tried um mm. uh where you hit on the head a lot as a child i've tried uh you know i don't nothing works okay well then i'd run with it i just say you know next time just say this is this is crap like and I've do better everything. be a better say something like be a better version of yourself see how that goes yeah if i say it with jfk's accent or something it'll be inspirational and she'll do everything that i say samina said have you tried slipping her a 20 money's no object to this child because that would be too easy samina uh, mm. Elmer asked the question, and this is our last question, by the way. So if you got anything else, you better hurry up because we're about to close up shop because it's Father's Day and we it's... really should get a life. Um, Elmer asks, how many squirrels do you think would fit in your house, Nicholas? Yeah. So, again, I was forced to do some research here, Mike. Uh, took me forever. You, you get about 25 squirrels per urban square kilometer. So I'm thinking five to seven tops within the house before it really becomes a nightmare. Yeah, this is what I was thinking about. Like, is this like the gumball question? How many gumballs do you fit in the bowl or whatever? Like, literally, how many squirrels could you fit in there? Are we thinking about the carrying capacity for a balanced ecosystem? So the question that popped in my mind is, how much cereal do my kids drop on the floor and then leave there without cleaning it up? And how many squirrels would that feed? The answer after complicated math was 64. Wow, you, that's, a, that's a pretty significant number. You already have 64 animals in the house, though, right? So you, you really have to be 
off of the squirrels. Someone please help me. The issue, if you put 64 squirrels in there, won't some of them do the... Oh, yeah, and you're going to get more squirrels. Yep. you gotta, you got to question how many squirrels are going to turn into baby squirrels, or as gross scientists call it, the fecundity rate. That's a real word. Look it up. Well, say it again. Spell it for us. F-E-C-U-N-D-I-T-Y. It's a real word. I learned mm, that from gross scientists. Cool. Uh, for some reason, my wife is making 69 references. I don't know what that means. I know she giggles yeah. about it every time she says it. Again, mm. I go to the lingerie store to be surprised. I don't know what's going on with any of those things. Uh, you guys, uh, this is Father's Day. I hope you will take some time. It's been a long freaking week. It promises to be a long week freaking week this week in the meantime you can post questions using the ask twinsies hashtag and nick and i next sunday will give terrible answers to your real or ridiculous questions thanks nick have a good week have a good week see you guys bye bye